This is Eric Basto with the Indium Corporation and what I'm going to do here in this short video is try to demonstrate the simplicity of the materials needed to plate indium metal onto metallic surfaces. People don't often uh, associate plating with indium but it is possible. Typically we think of materials like gold, chrome, nickel as materials that are electroplated but it is possible to electroplate indium metal onto other conductive metallic surfaces. Now what is necessary to do that? Well it is a um, is a, typical with any sort of wet plating situation. You need a plating solution, a plating bath, a medium in which uh, the, the plating takes place. And that uh, in the case of indium we provide an indium sulfamate plating bath and it's, it comes ready mixed, it's all set, ready to go. Uh, it is an a, acidic solution. You'll notice on the top of the bottle there's a corrosive sticker. And the pH of the bath is about one and a half to two. And uh, if for those of you that are familiar with plating processes, you typically hear of additions uh, necessary to keep the bath functioning properly, especially where grain refiners are concerned. This uh, solution comes with grain refiners already in there. They are triethanolamine and dextrose and they are supplied in the bath in excess so that the end user, the customer, should not ever have to make additions of, um, of grain refiners to the plating bath. Now as far as the, the control of the plating bath is concerned, it is necessary to control the pH. If the pH gets too high, you can actually have a flocculent form, which is indium hydroxide. It's a, a white material that will precipitate out of solution and pull all the indium metal out of solution. And the other thing that's necessary to control is the amount of um, indium metal in the bath. Now, this bath is designed to work with soluble indium anodes. And as long as one uses soluble indium anodes, the metal content in the bath regulates itself. So there's no um, uh, very low um, maintenance as far as the, the, ba the bath goes itself. Now, it is a, um, as, I, as I mentioned, the, the use of soluble indium anodes. I do consider the use of the anodes, soluble indium anodes, a necessity. Otherwise, the, uh, the indium metal content of the bath will get out of whack and it will stop plating properly. Now, being an uh, indium corporation, I have the luxury of just finding uh, pieces of scrap indium metal laying around. These are nothing special. I just wanted to grab something here for the sake of, of this uh, short demonstration. But it is preferable to have the surface area of the anode and its relative geometry be that of the, uh, of the workpiece or larger. And for the sake of this discussion, I have uh, chosen a piece of copper uh, to function as my cathode, my, my workpiece, uh, for the sake of plating indium metal onto copper. Now, depending on the, the substrate material, uh, some surface preparation uh, prior to plating may be necessary. And this is uh, basically a, any surface preparation is related to two basic things. One, simple cleaning of the material to make sure there's no oil or anything like that on there. And the, uh, the second part of it is to remove um, any oxides, but that's beyond the, uh, on the, beyond the scope of this discussion in this video. So anyways, I'm showing copper as my, as my, my workpiece. It would not be common to plate um, indium onto copper. Uh, one of the things that happens is that indium will diffuse into the copper and it actually has a hardening effect. And uh, for some people and some applications that may be that may be desirable to harden the, the copper, but can also go too far where the copper will actually get brittle and would be subject to breaking. So just again, for the sake of our conversation, I'm using a piece of copper. It could be something else, some other conductive material, uh, to conductive metal material. If the material is not clean, is not free of oxides, the indium may plate onto it, and it may be kind of deceiving um, because you, you'll physically see the indium on there, but it may not adhere very well. And that's why um, pre-treatment of some metals is necessary. Now what I have here, you do need a container for the, the plating uh, to take place. And this is just a simple, very, very simple plastic bottle that I've cut the top off of. Um, obviously with the bath being um, 
uh, or having a pH of one and a half to two. It is a little bit corrosive and plastic works nice as a container because it can uh, stand up to that acidic bath. And what you'll see here is that I have uh, two pieces of indium uh, attached to both sides of the bath. And the reason for that is is because uh, assuming I want to plate both sides of this, of this copper workpiece, um, in order to do that, I have to suspend it between the, the two pieces of, of indium. If I only had one piece of, of indium, only one indium anode, it would only um, really plate on the side of the copper strip that's facing that anode. It's pretty much a line of sight plating process. Now, again, this is an electroplating process, so this would be my would be my cathode. It would be uh, electrically attached to the negative terminal on the rectifier or the negative terminal on the battery. And the indium is, is uh, again, the anode, which would be attached to the positive terminal on the rectifier or battery. We are cr creating um, indium positive ions, positive indium ions. And they go to the uh, workpiece, which is negatively charged and reverts back to indium metal. Now the the efficiency of this bath is 90 percent and that means that uh, you do get some um, breakdown of the water, you do get some evolution of hydrogen and oxygen gas as, uh, as the part of the inefficiency but it's still a very efficient bath with 90 percent of the current going toward the um, the indium plating itself. Now as I did mention um, this is a electroplating process and this is a very old rectifier but it works quite well one of the things or one of the advantages of a rectifier over a simple battery is that uh, it offers you control over the the current um, which ultimately affects the rate at which the indium is plated onto the workpiece and the plating rate does affect the appearance of the indium deposit on the workpiece Indium is never never creates a shiny, uh, shiny plated surface. It's always a, a dull gray, or not necessarily a gray, but a, a dull silvery gray appearance. And um, but you can, if you plate at a very high rate, you can get it to be more nodular than if you plate at a at a slow rate. So very quickly here, this is if I were to attach this all up, and I ultimately I will in a separate video, we can easily plate indium onto that copper strip and uh, again it's a very simple very very simple thing to do thank you for listening bye bye